Hi everyone, today's factoring the difference of two squares. Your essential question for this set of notes, what value or term is missing when dealing with difference of squares when written in standard form? Your terms and definitions, your first term is a perfect square. So this is an algebraic term, um, is a perfect square when the coefficient is a perfect square and the exponents of each of the variables are even numbers. So a list of our, some examples of our perfect squares, when we do 1 times 1, we get 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, so these are all perfect squares, 4 times 4 is 16, I hopefully said 3 times 3 for that 9, 4 times 4 is 16, uh, 5 times 5 is 25, and so on, it keeps going on and on and on, those are perfect squares. As for what I mean for the variables are even, um, the exponents for the variables are even numbers, that would be like 2, 4, 6, 8, so all of those. These would actually be perfect squares as well. Um, okay, so our next term we have is for difference of two squares. So a polynomial is a perfect square when the coefficient is a perfect square and the exponents of each of the variables are even numbers. So here we don't actually have a number in front of the variable. we will see that. If we had a 4 right here, then that would be a perfect square. That's what I mean by the number in front of the variable again. We do have two even exponents on that a squared minus b squared. This is the general formula that you guys will see, so go ahead and write down this formula here, as well as your term and definition. Um, but you have a squared minus b squared, which is equal to a minus b, a plus b. And you can totally rewrite this. It can go either ways, you guys, a plus b, and a minus b, as long as you have that. Um, we see that if we are in standard form, you guys, that we are actually missing that middle value, that b term. We're going to see it in some other examples here. So steps for factoring the difference of two squares. Our first step, you're going to make sure polynomial is in standard form and simplified completely. Our second step, you're going to identify a GCF. If there is one, if not, skip step two. Step three, you're going to identify if each of the terms are perfect squares. Um, that's double checking the numbers, making sure they're a perfect square, double checking your variables with the exponents are even. There has to be two terms, so you have to be working with a binomial, and you must have a negative as the operation that's going in between those. It cannot be a positive to start off with. Step four, you're going to determine each term, um, term's perfect square, so we're actually going to figure out those. Step five, substitute values in for each variable. And step six, you're going to check your answer by distributing. So here's all of our steps. Um, we're going to go over these in our um, examples right now. So our first example, you have x squared minus 64. So our first thing to make sure it is in standard form. We see that we have it's x squared minus 64. So this is actually a x squared minus c. So we are actually missing our bx term. So that's the one we're actually missing in there. Um, so what we're going to do, that the reason why we are missing it is because when we distribute, they will cancel each other out. You'll see it again. Um, so our first thing, make sure it's in standard form, check. Second thing, identify any GCFs. We don't have any GCFs, so we get to skip um, step number two. Um, our step number three is to identify if each of the terms are actually perfect squares. Well, I do have an exponent that's even, and I do have a number that is a perfect square. It's 8 times 8. So yes, I do actually have perfect squares. We also have to make sure we have two terms, check, and must make sure that we have a negative sign in between. It will not work if this is a positive. So you we do have a negative sign, so we are able to now figure out our perfect squares, which is step four. Our perfect square of x squared is x times x. So that's going to get placed in for our a. So you guys can also see it like this, x squared. What's the square root of x squared? Will those cancel each other out? And that will actually equal our a value. Whatever value is listed first here is going to get represented for your a's. So we right now we have an a equals x squared. So that's our first term. And then our b, in this case, is a negative 64. So we're trying to figure out the square root of that one as well. Well, it happens to be 8, so we get to do 8 and a positive 8. So, um, if we go back and actually look at this, so I'm going to erase this just to show you guys that we can actually start look working with just this value. So, a is the first one. That's going to get plugged in for my a's. 
your second term is just going to get plugged in for whatever second term you have, that value here. Okay. So then now, um, we substitute those values in for each of those variables. The, the first term was my A's, the second term was my B's, and now we're going to check our answer by distributing. So when we distribute, we're going to do x times, so this is your final answer, but we are going to check this. So x times x is x squared, I just did multiply them, x times a positive 8 is a positive 8x, negative 8 times x is a negative 8x, and negative 8 times a positive 8 is a negative 64. You're going to combine like terms. So this is why we are missing the middle term, because they always cancel each other out. I have positive 8x's and I have negative 8x's. So I have each of those values, so now I'm left with just x squared minus 64, and that got us back to our original equation check. So again, your final solution when you have factored everything is all the way to there. For our next example, we see that we have numbers and variables. Um, so again, first step, make sure our polynomial is in standard form. It is. Step two, you're going to identify our GCF. I don't have a number that goes into 25 and 36 or variables that are the same, so I get to skip that step, and now I'm going to identify if I have a perfect square. I have, so my requirements are, I have two terms, perfect. Um, I also want to check that I have a negative symbol, yes. 25 is a perfect square of 5 times 5. 36 is a perfect square of 6 times 6, and then those x squareds and y squareds both have positive exponents. So we have all of our requirements to actually go through with this. So I'm going to take that 25x squared, and I know that's my first term, so it's going to get plugged in for the first values of those parentheses. So the square root of 25 is 5, and I also have x squared, which is x times x. So we have 5x and 5x. You get to put both of those there. Then that sign, you can do a plus and a minus here, or a minus and a plus, either way. And then now I'm going to see what the perfect square for 36y squared is. Well, 6 times 6 is 36, so I know that that's going to be the number. And then that y is also y times y. So this is my final solution. Okay, and our last value here, we have two terms again. I have 1 times 1, which is a perfect square, perfect, 36 is a perfect square, 6 times 6, and y is an even exponent, y squared times y squared. So now I get to write this coefficients, 1 minus 6y squared times 1 plus 6y squared. And that's it, guys. Um, so you just have to follow the formula, just write the first value, second value, and we'll get lots of practice with this.